Are you tired of accidentally cutting your clips in Final Cut Pro? Do you wish there was a way to avoid those kind of frustrating mistakes? Well, I've got some great news for you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn off the blade tool in Final Cut Pro. Then I'll share my top three blade tricks. And trust me, it's going to change your editing game for the better. But wait, before you skip ahead to the next video, I'll show you why the most useless tool in Final Cut Pro is actually really handy in just one keystroke. Let's cut to the chase. So I'm in Final Cut Pro and you can see I have the blade tool activated because it shows a scissor icon for cutting. To turn off the blade tool, I'll just click on the tools pop-up menu and select the tool I want. Even faster, I can just press A to switch back to the select tool. You'll notice that my mouse cursor changes from a scissors to a pointer. You can switch between tools permanently by pressing their keyboard shortcut. So I'll switch to the blade tool by pressing B and you'll see I've got the scissor turned on. And then I can go back to select tool with A and I have it permanently on. But let's say I use the select tool a lot and then I want to quickly change to another tool. Well, I can just hold down the tools keyboard shortcut and it will change. So I'm gonna press and hold B on my keyboard and now you'll see the blade tool is active. And as soon as I let go of B, it turns back to the select tool. And that'll work for any of these tools here. I can quickly change to the trim or position tool. So I'll press T and hold it down and I've got my trim icon. And as soon as I let go, it goes back to my previously selected tool. All right, now you know how to turn blade off. I'm gonna show you some really cool tricks, some advanced techniques with the blade tool. Let's activate blade by pressing B. And now watch what happens when I skim these stacked clips here. It shows in the viewer the top stacked clip. But if I wanna see what this clip looks like down here, I can skim it with my blade tool to see that actual clip or even the bottom one. All right, now with the blade tool active, I can skim and just click where I want to cut that clip. You'll notice the clip is divided into two separate clips now. And in between, you'll see this dotted line. That indicates a through edit, which means the media is continuous between both clips. There's not a jump in the video. With the blade tool on, I can move my playhead over a bunch of clips stacked, and then I can hold down shift, and you'll notice the icon changes. And then if I click, it will cut all of the clips in the primary storyline and any that are connected to it. Now you can see they've all been cut right along that line. Another way to use the blade tool is to move the playhead where I want to trim it, right there, then click on trim and select blade, or press command B and it cut it into two. Even faster is to move my skimming playhead where I want to cut it and just press Command B. I was able to cut the clip without switching to the blade tool and I can do that on the fly while it's playing back. Just press Command B to cut the clip. Let's say you want to cut just this top clip and this middle clip. So select them and now press Command B and then only the selected clips get cut. All right, the fastest way to cut all of the clips where your playhead is, is to put your playhead where you want it to cut and then go up to trim and select blade all or press shift command B. Even faster is to use the skimming playhead, this red one, move it to the spot I want to cut and then press shift command B. And now you'll see all of them have been cut right along that line. And again, this works during playback as well. Just press shift command B wherever you want it to cut and it will cut everything in the primary storyline connected above it and below it. You can see that these clips have been cut into smaller clips. All right, if you've cut a clip and you didn't mean to do that, just use the select tool by pressing A and click on and select one of these edit points in between like so, and then press delete. It will remove the cut and join them back together. But this only works for clips that are from the same media source and the timing hasn't changed on them. You can also select the clips and go up to trim and select join clips. Sadly, there's no keyboard shortcut for this. Don't you just love the blade tool? It's so useful. And if this video has been useful to you, will you please give it a thumbs up so other people will see it? And in just a little bit, I'm gonna show you that handy tool. But first I wanna show you how to use the trim tool. To activate the trim tool, click on the tool pop-up menu and select trim, or even faster, press T, and you'll get this special little cursor. Hover over an edit point between two clips and then click and drag it left or right. This is called a roll edit. I'm making the first clip shorter and the second one longer. Or if I go to the right, I'm making the first clip short longer and the second one shorter. You can see up in the viewer area that it shows the last frame of the first clip and the first frame of the second clip. If you don't see this, open up preferences by pressing command comma, go to the editing tab and make sure show detailed trimming feedback is turned on. The next trick with the trim tool is to just hover over and click and drag left and right on a clip. I'm changing the start and end frame of my video clip by moving left and right. And this little time code that pops up shows me how much I've changed it. 
So I changed it by one second. I can also use comma to do it one frame at a time or period to move it forward one frame at a time. If I hold down shift, I can do that 10 frames at a time with comma and period. If I hold down option, I get a different icon. This is called a slide edit. It allows me to slide that clip around in the timeline without creating any sort of gaps. Sometimes the magnetic timeline can get confusing and people want to turn it off. This is how to do that. Go to the tools pop-up menu and select position or just press P to bring up the position icon. It looks a lot like the select tool, but it doesn't have a handle. Now I can move things around and it does not mess up the timing. I'll move this to the left and you'll see it creates this gap clip to the right. And when I let go, it overwrites whatever was there. I can also extend the timeline. If I click and drag it over here to the right, you'll see that it starts to add a gap clip here and it allows me to extend my timeline. And it also left a gap clip here where the clip used to be. If I click and drag up above the storyline, it creates this gap clip and it keeps my timing intact. If I wanna drag something from the top back into the timeline, it's not going to move the clips and make room for it. It's just simply going to overwrite whatever was there. All right, the next useful tool is the range selection tool. Click the tool pop-up menu and select range selection or what I like to do is just press R and we get this special range selection icon. Now I can select a portion of that clip instead of the whole thing. I can also move my playhead within the range selection and press I to set a new endpoint or O to set a new out point. Now with that selected, I can go up to trim and select trim selection or press option backslash. And it trims that clip to the selection. This is really handy for turning down audio of a section instead of the whole thing. So let's say I have a voiceover during this clip right here and I want the music to be a little bit lower. So I'll just click and drag with range tool activated to make a selection. And now I'll press control minus to lower the volume of the music one decibel at a time you'll see that the volume is lower in the area I selected than the area I didn't select. Lowering the audio of one track so you can hear another track better is called ducking the audio. All right, the next useful tool is called the zoom tool. Click on the pop-up menu and select zoom or press Z to activate it. You get this little magnifying lens and now I can just click where I want to zoom in and I can click multiple times to get in close. To zoom out, I'll hold option and click. With the zoom tool selected, I can also click and drag to zoom in on a certain section. Now, if I'm zoomed in really close here and I want to see my whole project at once, I can just press Shift Z and it zooms out to fit my entire project in the timeline. I can also go up to view and select zoom in or zoom out. I can also use the keyboard shortcuts, command plus to zoom in or command minus to zoom out. I can also use this zoom slider under the appearance button and then I can use this zoom slider to zoom way out or in. Too close, let's zoom out with Shift Z, perfect. The last tool has been called the most useless tool in Final Cut Pro, but I beg to differ. Go to the pop-up menu and select hand, or you can just press H and you'll get this little hand icon. This allows me to move my timeline around. For example, I'm gonna press Z to move into this section here. I'll click and drag. And now I'm gonna press and hold H and the hand tool comes up. This allows me to click and drag to move around the timeline. I can move forward in time or back in time. I can also move up and down to see different parts of it. This is really handy when you're zoomed in somewhere and you need to move around. Of course, you could use this scroll bar here at the bottom, click and drag on it to move side to side, but it's kind of hard to hit it just right with the mouse and switching to the hand tool is a lot faster, especially if I do it temporarily. So maybe I'll start with the select tool and I've selected a clip, but now I need to check something here on the right. So I'll press and hold H and I'll go over here to the side. And then when I let go of H, I'm back to my select tool and I'm ready to edit. I do this all the time. I'll temporarily switch. So I'll make an edit and then I'll press and hold H to move around and then I'll let go and I can quickly make another edit or change. Final Cut Pro comes with so many awesome tools like the blade tool. But did you know that it also comes with some tools for making slideshows really quickly and easily? I made a video showing how to do that. Click here to check it out.